Hi, I'm Jason and this is Charity and welcome to our yurt. We'll show you around what we've built here in Camelot, Seward, Alaska. We have a business where we rent yurts out, so we actually had another yurt sitting around that was in storage, not being used, and last fall, September, we bought this piece of property. It was it was flat, it already had gravel in here, but it was completely overgrown, it had been filled with gravel like 10 years ago. There were two school buses sitting right here where the yurt is. There was a camper over here under a building that had collapsed under snow load years and years ago. There was an outhouse and a little shed over here. There was another camper and there was a guy just squatting on this property and it was completely overgrown with alders. There was, there was 15 to 20 foot alders in here. It looked like a little jungle. I just came in and started trimming out alders and kind of made a little driveway in and then we bought the property and we just came in, cleared out all the alders, burned everything, and we started building right away. Like I said, we already had this yurt, so it was, it was pretty quick, and we had a bunch of wood around to build it on, and it happened really quick once we kind of got it cleared out and got all the junk out of here was the big thing. We just did dump runs and sold the trailer frame. We bought the property in September of last year, and then moved on to here like mid-October of last year. <clears throat> So between September to October, we kind of got the land cleared out and ready to build. And then in October, we started with the foundation of the yurt. Ramp. This is easy access for the dog. Chigach is 10 years old, and it's got some achy joints. And we I think we had steps in the beginning that were just stacked pieces of wood, but we uh, put this ramp up. And it's nice because this stuff, like, the dirt comes off your shoes as you're coming up. And this is just an old piece of some kind of conveyor material. Like That came think, from the dump, I think. Oh, of course, it came from the dump. <laughs> but uh, originally, I think it was like a fish conveyor belt for the fish processing plant. I see this stuff around a lot, but it's just like heavy-duty uh, welcome mat. And then the ramp is, like I said, built for two guys to get up and down. So right inside the door, we have our kitchen. Jason and I built these counters. The countertop wood is the same plywood that we have for our floors. So this was extra scrap that we had after we cut the circle shape on the floor. And what was nice about it is it had the curve of the yurt built into it, and so these counters fit right to the edge of the yurt. So you don't lose any space by having a square countertop up against the wall. We use, yeah, this scrap from our floor. These 4x4s and 2x4s are just extra scrap wood we had laying around and we painted them green just for some color. And then our backsplash here is extra galvalume that we had from our shower houses out at our business yurts. Like outside, we have those blue drums with the hose. You can see the hose comes up here and we've just coat, got coat a coat hanger. hanger holding it in place, but the foot pump is right here, and like Jason said, this is something that you see on boats a lot. So you just push on the foot pump, and water comes out. It's really nice. It's hands-free water. You can just like wash your hands and fill up pots or whatever. And opposed to like a little electric pump that you turn it on, water's just shooting out. You can right. just give this a little teeny, you know, you can push like a little water out. To brush your teeth, you only need a splash. The sink came from one of the campers that was abandoned on the property when Jason bought it, so that's where we got the sink. All of these little shelves we built specifically for milk crates because we knew we were just going to be storing our food in milk crates, so we built them for that height specifically. This shelf is built specifically so that those blue jugs can fit underneath of it. This is where we store our water in the wintertime so it doesn't freeze. So when I do dishes, it's kind of a process to do dishes, but this is, I pull this guy out, it's got dirty dishes in it right now, but I fill, I fill it with hot water, so I either fill up a pot and put it on top of our heater here, or put it on our stove, um, and put this hot soapy water in here, and then just use this to rinse the dishes, and then put the dishes in this side to dry. So, yeah, it's kind of a process, but it's not that bad. Over the winter, we were even taking dishes into town. With and just us doing them in different places. Like yeah, wherever they had a house. Or just show up with like dirty dishes. Or... <laughs> 
Or we brought hot water from town a couple times because we shower in town at the Harbor Master office. They have public showers. It's two dollars, seven minutes of hot water, but they have a hot water sink. Over here, this is our stove and oven. This was also salvaged from one of the campers that was on the property. And this thing is sweet. It works great. But yeah, cast iron's great. We can we can cook on there. We can put it on the on the heater to cook yeah. things and warm stuff up. Or even out in a fire, like the summer, we had a big fire out here with people over and we just put fish right in the cast iron pan and just throw it in there. And... We have some crude storage over here. Um, again, just milk crates stacked up on each other with pots and pans and stuff. If we were going to live in here permanently, we would make this better, but we do intend to build a different place, so this works for now. In this funky corner back here, we built a shelving unit for all of our clothes. So it's a little grid back here and we, Jason and I, each just stuff our clothes in the grid. Which this is nice because it also is bracing for our bed here. Which we yeah, it gives some sheer strength to the bed so it's not bed. wiggling in this direction. But you can check out the closet. It's got a clothing and food storage has crept in there too. So <laughs> yeah. they kind of mingle in the, in the little cubicles back there. And then this is our little diesel heater. This is a Dickinson stove. These are made for boat use, but it works great in here. Like we mentioned before, out back we have our fuel tank, which gravity feeds in. And this thing is really nice because you can just leave it running all winter long. It's not like a wood stove where you have to feed it, um, and if you don't, then you wake up and it's freezing cold. It's just a constant temperature in here, which is really nice. And it has a cast iron cooktop as well, so if you need a dishwater heated up, you could just put your pot of water there, and then you're not using propane on the stove just to heat up water. Um, you can cook on here too. We so. throw we throw aluminum foil out of our stove, and it becomes a toaster, just like this. Yeah, toaster. Band toaster, heat up tortillas. Here's. If we had to pay for this, we might have gotten a cheaper wood stove. Yeah. Because these brand new are like. I think this model is like $1,200, but yeah, it works really well. It, the pipe just goes straight up and exits through the skylight. Uh, Nomad shelters that builds these yurts, they design them for a six inch insulated uh, metal bestos pipe to go through the ceiling. So we just had to adapt this smaller uh, pipe to fit that six inch outlet. But it's nice because instead of just exiting straight out the wall, like some yurt companies just uh, exit a stovepipe right out the wall, but we actually get a lot of heat off of the stovepipe because there's so much surface area of it in here, so it's nice having it. And it's right by our bed too, so it gives off a lot of heat up high there. One of the first things we built in October after we got the yurt up, we got the kitchen counters done, but we also built our bed here. We wanted it to be raised so that we'd have some more space underneath, just living space, and also in the winter time, the floor tends to sit around 40 degrees, but up in our bed it's always at least 60 degrees, so it's warmer for sleeping and cooler down here for chew hatch, which is nice. Yeah, he gets overheated he at overheats, about like, 48 degrees, it's too yeah. hot for him, and he starts so. panting, so it's nice having the cold floor. We just wear slippers, but he's really comfortable. Yeah, so um, yeah, we built this thing, and it's it's great. And this uh, is all scrap wood, yep. salvage wood, somebody gave us these 4x4s and 4x6s. This little guy is a nice, very simple um, addition in the winter time or even now when it's raining a lot, you get wet gloves or wet socks or whatever, you can just clip them on here and they're right next to the heater so it dries out pretty quick. We wanted to build a loft just to have more floor space and uh, you know, get the bed up high where it would be warmer. We kind of anticipated that it would be warmer up high near the ceiling. And we wanted to have some kind of little guest bed underneath. So far we haven't had that. We just have this little teeny couch. But Our friend gave us. It's perfect. It's like the smallest couch you've ever seen. Yeah. And we wanted to... We talked about building something underneath here. That was the initial plan was like, oh, we'll, we'll build a loft and underneath we'll build in something so that, that you know, a like folding a little fold it. out or like these slide out type that I see now where it's like slats of wood that, you know, interlock like this. I still want to build one of those, but yeah, in the meantime, we got this little couch and 
It's, it's working well. It's nice. It's like a little cozy little hole in there. You go in there with a cup of coffee and read a book. I somehow take naps on here. They're always really uncomfortable. But, but you the, the space is it. so cozy <laughs> that I feel like I'm comfortable. So yeah, I go in there and like curl up on the couch. And... Creates a little room. Yeah, it's the only room besides the little closet. You've got the room and the bedroom and the sitting room. <laughs> that's, that's it. So If we're disagreeing, like I'll go hide in there. I need a curtain on it so I can just yeah. <laughs> isolate myself. Um, and, and we don't have any bookshelf. We have like, yeah. I have thousands of books out in the codex, so that's another thing. We kind of rotate the library and we just pile books up here. They fall over constantly, but they're, it's nice just having them right there. Magazines, Charity Subscribes, National Geographic, so they're right there, easy to access. And we've talked about doing a little um, bookshelf in this opening over here, which would give the loft a little more stability. But again, it's one of those things that probably not. We'll probably move this year before we ever build a bookshelf in here. Yeah. We yeah. were trying to figure out a way to incorporate this as like one big piece of furniture. Like I was saying, have a guest bed underneath and shelves on this side and a bookshelf. And we thought like, oh, we'll just build one little structure in the earth that kind of has everything. But uh, in the process of trying to figure that out, we through YouTube, we found this girl that showed us how to make this triple kind of double lap a, a, half lap. a half lap is a joint that goes like this. You have your one piece of wood you cut out, and then you have your other piece of wood that you cut out, and a half lap goes like that where they overlap. But this is three pieces of wood meeting at one point, so it's kind of a double half lap. You have this one's cut out, and this one's cut out, and then another one is cut out to fit in there. So it was really complicated, but this uh, girl on YouTube that lives in Portugal made a similar loft, and uh, yeah, we watched it over and over, and then we made a couple sample pieces just out of scrap 4x4, four four, and we put those together. And then it turns out we figured out, oh, we've got these posts, but this is a 3.5-inch 4x4, four four, which is standard, but we also have 4x4s four in the corners that are actual 4-inch four 4x4, four four, which <laughs> is meeting up with a 4x6, four six, six. which is actually 5.5 inches by 3.5 inches, but the one back there is 4x6, so... Each one had to be cut different, and Charity did the math on it, like, oh, this one, and we scribed it all out, and I did the cuts, but... So because we were using scrap wood, we had those kind of issues, but it still turned out fine. Yeah, it's really stable, and we just have little teeny lag screws kind of going through the joint just to hold it together, because it just all kind of rests on each other. But the whole purpose of a half lap is it looks nice, it's nice joinery, it's strong, and it also saves you space. Um, like instead Actually, of, the railing right here is half lap. Yeah, so this is half lap. You can't see it. Just look, you know, it ends up being flush. But this is cut out halfway through, and this is cut out halfway through. So instead of having this two by four on top of this two by four, you just sandwich it into the size of one two by four. So you save you save space, and it's just it's better building. We have this little ottoman here for seating. It's nice when we have friends it's over. Covered. It's actually kind of. Kind of nice. We this were came at, from the Goodwill in Anchorage yeah. for eighteen dollars. We didn't have any furniture, and I saw this, and I told Charity, I was like, "It's a mini couch." And I had to convince her. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's all that is, really. Yeah, back in this corner, this ends up being like piles of laundry. It's cleaned up right now, and we have our laundry bag. And behind the little mini couch, we do have a little bit of storage back there. We we keep other comforters and instruments back there. Keep our laundry right here, and this is the ladder that Charity built. <laughs> and really, you kind of just pick a step, like nobody goes up the ladder, like each step at a time. I go like this far up and then hop in, or sometimes I even step on here and go to the top step and get in just to skip levels. It's nice when you're living in a small space to have a little open area, even just this being uncluttered feels nice. Off. Yeah, it's it's just good to have that. But it gets cluttered it inevitably get cluttered. at some point. Stuff piles up, mostly laundry. And then here is the the Gold Zero battery pack that's connected to the solar panel out there. So it's got um, USB charging, re regular 24 volt. No, eight, uh, 120. Sorry, AC. 120. So this is what we use to charge phones. Um, Jason, we have a collection of little lights. This little bio light is cool. 
This can even acts as a little battery bank, so it's got a USB in and out. And we even charge our phone off this thing sometimes. And we have an assortment of little lights that we've used throughout the winter. And yeah. From propane lanterns to head, we do a lot of stuff by headlamp. Yeah. Candles. Headlamps are important. LEDs. We have these little things which. Were, AC lights. Yeah, these work great when you have sunlight, but in the winter time, you can't keep this thing charged. They just sat yeah. all winter. It's a good idea, you know, you get a little bit of light. We're using them right now because we still ha do have enough daylight to charge them, but yeah. in the winter they were kind of... Um, currently we have this little LED strip up here, and that's what, that was ended up being our primary light over the winter, I think, once we narrowed it down. And this is just running, it's a USB strip. They're actually on Amazon, people put them around their flat screen TVs for like backlighting or something. I think that's kind of ridiculous, but... Right now we're just running this off of Makita tool battery that we use for our all of our cordless tools. And this is just a little adapter that goes on the 18 volt battery and has USB plugs on it. So we can charge phones off this, we can run a little strip light. And uh, we just charge that either off the Honda generator or sometimes last winter we would go to the library and we'd plug in, we charge a lot of things <laughs> to the library. And, you know, you know, you plug in a battery charger that has a little fan on it, so we put a jacket on it to keep it quiet. <laughs> Charging batteries in there. But, yeah, that ended up being our kind of number one light source over the winter. This thing does get a lot, you know, the skylight, just on, even on a cloudy day with the skylight like this, I mean, it's pretty bright in here. But in the winter time, it is, you have a lot of dark time, so, um, yeah, it's, there's no one answer really to lighting in here. It's just kind of a bunch of little lights, and if we're running the generator, then we have a, a electric light. Well, thanks for watching our tour of our home. If you want to follow along with us, our business is Shearwater Cove, so you can find us at shearwatercove.com, and we have a Facebook page and Instagram for the business, so that's the way, best way to follow us. Yeah, and uh, any links will be in the description of this video that we've mentioned. And yeah, thanks for checking out our place.